I've been waiting for this interview here. This is very special for our Central Falcon series. I want to introduce everybody to Mr. Robert Warren. Yeah. How you doing, brother? Nice to meet you. Great to have this interview. Fantastic. Um, can we start with where are you originally from? I was born and raised in Capitol Heights, Maryland. Um, I was born in uh, Prince George Community Hospital. Uh, my first couple of years, we lived in a little house on 51st Avenue in Capitol Heights, which was across the street from the house that my mother was born in. My mother, uh, my mother's roots are from Capitol Heights, Maryland. My dad's roots are from Elkins, West Virginia. And and we, uh, I I lived in Capitol Heights until, let's see, uh, until I got married. I, I, my dad and I built a house next door to the, to the uh, one of the first houses we lived in. And uh, my wife, uh, Faye Faye Talbert, I met in high school. Uh, we lived in the house next door to um, one of the first houses we lived in in Capitol Heights. So. I was there from the time I was born to the time I got married, and then the next few years, and then we we moved to uh, Upper Marlboro, Maryland. Okay, Touch, can you tell us more about what um, that area of what? Because it's all called Capitol Heights now, you know, pretty much. So, um, what was what was that like when we took we look at George Palmer Highway from let's say where Watkins are, uh, and take us down the highway to some things that were there when you were younger. Sure. Well, Capitol Heights, when I grew up there, and, and even almost in my adult years, was mainly a white community. Um, and, and I went to a school at Capitol Heights Elementary School, and then went to Maryland Park Junior High, and then on to Central. So um, it, it was a, a middle class, working people type of community. But um, it was like I said, it was it was all white until later on in life. So I would say until after I got married sometime. But um, more of uh, the black community was uh, more over towards um, Sea Pleasant and and over that way around George Palmer Highway and so on. So, um, but uh, Capitol Heights was mainly a white community when I grew up here. Okay. okay. T tell us more about some of the some of the things that the uh, Robert Woolwine from one to ten places that you played had fun. You know things you did uh, around that area. Sure. Uh, my early years, I started out playing boys club football. Um, where I started probably around uh, ten years old, the first team, and um, played uh, club football until I was about 12. And when I went to junior high school and played uh, at, at Maryland Park flag football, but um, mainly it was boys club football uh, is what we played uh, in the early years. And then I got, as I grew, just probably before I went to, uh, maybe the last year of elementary school, I, I got interested in basketball. And my dad built me a basketball court beside the house and I'd go out there by myself and just practice and shoot, you know, try to make moves and things like that. And I, I did that quite often. And so basketball, I, I really love the sport of basketball. Gotcha. <laughs> so t tell us about that. I don't want to speed forward, but I heard a great story about, you know, you guys uh, finally beating with Thune Junior High. So I heard, yeah, tell yeah. us about it. Right. Uh, well, uh, I started playing uh, for Maryland Park in the eighth grade. Uh, Maryland Park was uh, a true junior high school, seventh, eighth, and ninth. And uh, so I made the team in eighth grade and then on to the, uh, made the team in ninth grade as well. And that's where I met Lamar. Um, we, uh, I'm not exactly sure. Uh, what the circumstances were when I met Lamar. I know we uh, we had phys ed class together and we played flag football together and so on. And so uh, we struck up a friendship there. And of course, having sports in common 
uh, you know, helped us to have a good friendship. But anyway, uh, the thing about Bethune, um, Lamar talked a little bit about it, uh, but there was, it was a couple of, um, details he left out. Uh, when we beat them at their school, um, it was, it was always a big rivalry. I mean, whether it was flag football or basketball or whatever, we, uh, we always had a rivalry with the Foon and then later on when we went to Central, uh, Fairmont Heights. But anyway, the, the story of the Foon, we beat them by one point, uh, at their school. And from what I remember, I was told that that's the first time, and I don't know exactly how old the school was. It wasn't that old, probably four or five years old, maybe. Um, but they'd never been beaten at anything in any sport until that day. And, uh, what happened was, uh, we, uh, we, it was a close game all the way. We got down towards the end and, and somehow we had the ball coming down the floor with just a few seconds to go. The coach called timeout and we go over to the sideline. So we had the ball at half court and, um, the, the, uh, the direction from the coach was, um, cause Skip Davis played it. He was, Skip Davis was our center. And so, uh, the direction from the coach was get the ball to skip underneath. So we get, probably get a layup or at least maybe get a foul call or whatever. And I'm thinking in my head, I'm taking the shot. I, I, I was the type of player I, I wanted to take control of the game. So what happened was, they threw the ball into me. I made a few dribbles and went up for a jump shot, and, and I was fouled. And no time on the clock, so I had to make two foul shots, and uh, which I did. We won by one point. So, um, and the coach really never said anything to me about it. But as it turned out, you know, it was it was a it was a win for us. So I don't guess he was too disappointed in not getting the ball to skip. But anyway, uh, that's that's the way it went. Yeah, <laughs> because you usually they would go down low to the big man, but you 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 took those are clutch shots, man. Yeah, yeah, that was something. And then I can remember too. It's funny how you remember certain things because um, we were walking after the game. We were walking down the hallway uh, to the school, going to the locker room because you know you had to change clothes and stuff like that. And so some of the students were coming by us, and and they were kind of laughing and say, "Hey, who won?" You know, because they never thought we went, they weren't at the game, the ones that were asking that. And they were, they were kind of making a joke of it. And we said, we did. And they couldn't believe it. And so uh, that, that was, uh, that was an interesting part there too. So, uh, we, we really had some good times, uh, playing ball together. Fantastic. Tell me, tell me a little more about the, uh, athletic programs at, uh, Maryland Park. And also, please tell us about people like, uh, Tony Fur. Um and 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 lift Mr. Lipton. Yeah. Um. Well, Tony and uh, Chester. I didn't really. Um. I'm not exactly sure. They. I don't think they went to Maryland Park. Oh. Okay. Yeah. They. Uh, I knew them at Central, but uh, prior to um, prior to Central and our um the uh, athletic program at Maryland Park, um. It was, uh, you know, we had flag football, basketball, and baseball. And um, the thing about ba- and and Mar- Lamar loved baseball. Lamar was a baseball player. And uh, so we had uh, that particular year, our ninth grade year, we had an undefeated team. First undefeated team, undefeated baseball team in the history of the school. And that's saying something because um, my mom graduated from Maryland Park as a high school. And so that, that, that school had been in existence for a long time. And, um, I still can remember, uh, the top three batting averages on the team was, uh, Lamar batted 560. I batted 444. And, uh, Doug, a guy named Doug Wright batted 448. And, uh, we were, uh, being undefeated, we were pretty, you know, pretty cocky and so on. But uh, I can remember the one time before a game, uh, 
uh, I think it was Lamar, because we were going over the signs. You know, we had to change the signs every every game. So the coach is going over the signs with us, and uh, Lamar said, "Well, what's the home run sign?" And uh, the coach said, "A quick zipper," and uh, something like that. You know, that just goes to show the kind of the I don't know the cockiness or uh, that we had with us when we were playing ball. And, uh, yeah. The uh, the baseball team it was it was a really good team. Yeah, how how was the transition uh, in your? Because it was tenth grade you got to Central, right? Yeah. How was that transition to high school? Um, I don't. It, it was uh, you know a lot of times you hear stories about you know people transferring transitioning from uh, uh, junior high to high school and being you know, afraid of the upper class man and timid and things of that nature. But I think, I think being involved in sports, it made it a little bit easier for us. So those who, of us who were athletes, um, were concentrated on that. And, and of course we had, um, a summer football practice. So we would practice early, um, I think the rule, the county rule was you couldn't have coaches at the early practice until the middle of August, something like the 15th or whatever. But the captains from the previous year would come in and we'd start August 1st. So we would get to have a relationship with the upperclassmen through that. And so before we even got on the school grounds, you know, to go to school, we already knew guys that were playing on the team. So I think the sports helped us with that with that transition. Mm. Makes sense. That makes makes sense. Um, you played uh, baseball there, football. Anything else? Wrestling? Anything? I, I played basketball. Um, I played JV all year uh, in my uh, sophomore year, and then. Um, I played uh, varsity in my junior year. Uh, I wasn't a starter, um, but um, I, I played in several games. And then my senior year, um, I got a blood clot in my leg from um, football. I was uh, I was a defensive end and a fullback. And um, so anyway, my senior year, uh, about a game or two before the end of the season, I got stepped on and I got a, a big, but it was like the size of a golf ball in my, in my shin. And so I had to have surgery on it, but I waited. I wanted to finish out the season of football. So I waited until the end of the season. Well, basketball tryouts were coming up and, and I had to have surgery on my leg and this and that. And so, um, I didn't play my senior year because of that. Uh, that injury. So, um, yeah. But uh, play football um, three years and, and baseball three years. Deeply into mind, reaching deeply into mind, walking softly, holding hands, reaching deeply into mind, reaching. What were what were some of the uh, rivalry games you remember uh, when you were at Central with schools? Yeah, always Fairmont. Um, I can remember one year. Uh, I think it was my junior year when we played Fairmont at their school. What I remember about that the gym was packed. It was just kind of a small gym. That's kind of small stands. It wasn't as big as our gym. Because it was the older school, I guess. But but anyway, the point is, I remember trying to take the ball out one time, and the and the players and the uh, not not just the players, but the fans were so close to the sideline because they didn't have any other place to sit. 
I could barely get my feet out of bounds to throw the ball in. It was something. And it was just like standing room only. It was noisy. Uh, you, you could, it was hard to concentrate. It, it was, uh, it was an experience. Yeah. Wow. Sounds like it was a madhouse, and especially when you guys were on the road. It, it sure was, yeah. Tell tell me about the um the energy when you guys played against them. I mean, describe the yeah. The describe what? what tell me it? tell me the energy when you get when those two. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. It was uh, we we were always um up for for playing Fairmont. Um, it was it was a true rivalry. Um, we, it was, we, we, we practiced specifically for them to defend them. Uh, it was, uh, something that our coach took very, very seriously and, uh, tried to put in things maybe a little bit different, a wrinkle here, there, something like that to, to try to stop their, their players because they, they had, uh, I remember a guy and I don't think Lamar mentioned him, but. His name was Junie Hampton, and uh, he was a he was a heck of a shooter. I think he scored when when they played us at home. I think he scored like thirty six points. And, and and back then that was something because you know there was no three point line or uh, and and also considering you know the the times of the quarters and stuff like that there was wasn't that much you know there wasn't a lot of time what I'm saying it's not like a pro game where you got an hour you know so uh to score 36 points in a high school game is pretty good yes um were there other players on Fairmont that also were on your um as you remember no Hampton's the only one I remember from basketball I know um Lamar talked about Mark Christian, but um, I, uh, I think he was a, a center or a forward. But those are the only two guys I remember from basketball. Got you. So how, let, let's talk about that um, that football rivalry. Tell us about that. Yeah, that was something else. Uh, I can remember when I, I played JV uh, football my sophomore year, but I dressed for – Almost all of the varsity games, our coach would take some of the better JV players and dress them for varsity. And if we had a chance to, to put us in, we would get in. But um, I remember playing them at, at JV and get beat. And Ricky Yates, was, I think, played with us on that JV team. But uh, it, it, we got beat like 30 something and 32 to nothing, I think it was, when we played them uh, my sophomore year at JV. And then, um, uh, and that was at their school. And and then, of course, we, for some reason, we didn't play them our junior year. At least I don't remember playing them our junior year. Then, then of course, the, the big rivalry game was our senior year, uh, the one we lost, uh, 13 to nothing. Matter of fact, I have the newspaper clipping for that, and I was re just reading it just the other day uh, about what the newspaper said about it. But um, and then I was talking to Lamar about it too. But most of us that played that year and played that game remember it like it was yesterday. Uh, we can remember the different um, plays and um, who did what and 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 all that kind of stuff. And uh, so anyway, the point is it, 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 we had a big rivalry um, throughout the school year, uh, you know, basketball and football as well. But um, then losing a fair amount, we, we thought that we had the better team and we just, we made some critical errors that um, cost us the game. And I don't know if you know about that, but but both both of their scores, we gave them the ball inside the, the twenty yard line, inside our twenty yard line. So they didn't have to go one I, one time. I think it was inside the ten, so they didn't have to go very far to score their two touchdowns. We uh, like I said, the, the the two scores they got, they had to go less than twenty yards, and um uh. 
And to top it off, we were inside their 20 twice and then scored. And that, that's brought out in the newspaper article. So, um, so we, we really, really felt that, um, we should have won that game, but, um, uh, critical mistake of uh, players being hurt or, um, one of our guards got hurt on the kickoff, uh, which, which cost us dearly because, uh, he was, he was all counting. So not having, not having your first string guard really, uh, inhibits your running ability and so on. And, um, so a lot of things work together against us. So some of the things we, you know, we, we hurt ourselves on, but, um, it was, uh, the guys who played in that game remember, you know, they remember different things, but what they remember is like it was yesterday. Was what 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 were the uh, standout Fairmont players you guys played against? Anybody come to mind on that team that played you guys? Yeah, um, fellow by the name of Dickerson was a running back. Um, that's the only one that, that stands out in my mind. I don't really recall, um, you know, a lot of good pass receivers or something like that. But it was. Uh, Mainly Dickerson and um, because I played um, I played on the right side on the defensive end and uh, I watched a little bit of the film and uh, they they tried running my way but they didn't have much success so uh, at least that's the way I saw it um, uh, I was a pretty fair defensive end. Um, and and I was uh I was actually fairly big for uh, a high school player back then. I, I weighed about one seventy five. Um, that was bigger than some of our linemen. We we had a, a center, Frank Metzger. He only weighed one fifty five. And so uh, you know I was and and as a running back too, I was uh, probably heavier than than most of our linemen. So. Man, every my dad can't talk about it. Mr. Tolan is in his feelings because he says he he says he dropped a touchdown. Yeah, yep. You know what? He I don't remember that. Uh, I know he said that. I'm not saying it didn't happen. I'm just saying yeah. that you know because it happened to him, he remembers that. We all remember different things, you know, because you know of our viewpoint or our experience in the game. Uh, but. Um, you know that that things like that seems to haunt us for years. You know. See that this 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 uh mission I have, and I talked about um the whole dynamics between the two schools. That singular game, I'll, I'll show you how I have the same kind of haunting pain. Do you know that I grew up my whole life angry, right? Because. I'm just telling you my true life story. You had the rivalry of my mother's side of the family that were all Hornets. I mean, from, you know, a long time back. Then you have my father that went to Central. And they used to constantly in my own sight talk about how they put my father out of that game. You can imagine being a kid that was just livid, right? Yeah. So I have that same sort of uh, thing with you guys. Uh, I inherited the pain of that, that loss, you know? Yeah. I understand. Yeah. It, it's, it's so, so my thing is, uh, I don't know, man, that, that, that game sort of summarizes, um, we came up short uh, in, in that, but other than that, the season would have been, you know, undefeated, a spectacular season. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we were, um, we were beating teams just, I don't know, by 30, 40 points. We, I think one game we scored 54 points. And so, yeah, we had, we had an excellent team. So, 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 um, aside from Fairmont, tell me some of the other schools that, you know, you guys really fought with. Uh, 
we played um at Glen Park. Glen Park was in our um division and um you know that that was a little bit of a rivalry just because they were they were in our division, um Glen Park and then um uh Chaser and um uh, Upper Marlboro was um I don't think they had a football team. They had a baseball team and a basketball team, and they were pretty competitive uh, in basketball. So the, those were a couple uh, of the um, rivalries that we had within our division. Okay. Other than Fairmont, yeah. T tell us more about. Let's get into the central uh, teams themselves, and we, really, we can talk about. Uh, basketball also but we want to know some of the stars and some of the key players on uh the football and basketball team in your in your especially your um your junior and senior year yeah um as far as um let me think about uh a basketball um when i was a senior skip davis um he, he was our center and um and then Lamar was a forward, I believe. And uh we we had those were the two guys inside. Lamar could really jump. Lamar could jump high. Um and uh Skip Skip was just big. Um he he you know, he was a good shooter for a big man too. He had a good uh, a good touch. And uh so I of course I knew him from Maryland Park, so we had played together for a few years. Um and uh those are the two guys I remember the most. But the, you know, the big guys um when I was a senior. Got you. But tell me, did you did you see the guy Buck married at all? Um Buck yeah, Buck and I were pretty good friends. Um he played out front and um he was a guard. And um, he was a good ball handler, good shooter. Um, so, so Buck was uh, one of the main guys out front. And, you know, he and I were pretty good friends. He played a little bit of football, but he wasn't as good at football as he was basketball. Okay. Tell, tell us about, I know you're too sport. Tell us about some of your, though, influences on your football style. We're talking pro players your football style, and also some of your basketball influences, your personal uh, ways you styled your games after. Yeah, I um, one, one of my, uh, I guess you call them so-called idols, was uh, Jim Taylor. Packers. He was a running back. My number was 30 and his was 31. So we were <laughs> one digit off. So um, now he was he, he was a hard runner. And um, that's what I tried to be. I was not the, um, the breakaway speedster. I mean, I, I was not a fast uh, running back, but the one thing that I noticed it was when um when I put the uniform on, I, I had the same speed whether I had the uniform on or not. And so sometimes that helped me. But but the point I'm I'm trying to make is I was a uh, kind of up the middle runner. Um so 
Um, that that's what that's why I um kind of looked up to to Jim Taylor as far as football. Um, you know the Packers in the early '60s. You know what kind of teams they had. So they 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 were kind of my favorite football team. And then I basketball. I was a Boston Celtic fan. Um, John Havlicek. Um, Putting the ball on a play. He gets it out deep and Havlicek steals it. Over the stand goal. Havlicek stole the ball. It's all over. It's all over. Jimmy Havlicek is being mobbed by the fans. Bill Russell wants to grab Havlicek. He hugs him. He squeezes John Havlicek. The Celtics win it. One ten. <laughs> East with the ball, Walt Frazier of the New York Knicks. John Havlicek of the Boston Celtics. Ball as Walt Frazier comes out of there, trailing by four points in a minute and 45 to play. Jerry West after him. Havlicek, top of the key. Frazier. Had to get rid of it, and Havlicek saved it. A good defensive play by West, forcing Walt to do that. West almost stole it again, but Havlicek scores. Walt Frazier, John Havlicek, Dave Cowens, and Dave DeBusher. Here's a shot by Havlicek. And it's a two-point Wesley. First quarter, that's Havlicek, number 17. Back to Russell. Two Celtics working an old Boston Celtic play. And Monroe, they're going to have to put a lot of pressure on trying to make them start their offense out a little further. East leading 14 to 10. Havlicek, 16 to 10 for the East. East on an out of bounds play. Havlicek. White, the left side, off to Havlicek. Collins foul him, it'll count. And the Celtics control. And it'll be Havlicek with the first shot of the afternoon. Here's Hondo sliding down so easily. After dark, it's drifting season. After dark, it might happen for the wrong reasons. After dark, and it don't cease until the break of dawn. Bob Cousy was a little bit before me, uh, uh, so he was he was a guard and I was a guard. But um, but the, but the guys that I really um, liked their style of play mainly was John Havlicek. Um, he he was kind of he he almost played the the game like Larry Bird played the game. They they were. Um, they hustled all the time. They, they, they did what they needed to do to, to win the game. And, um, they had a good work ethic. Um, so those are the kind of players I, I looked up to as far as, uh, football and basketball. Let's see if I, let's see if I, if I have been your peer, you see, you, 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 my arch enemy, let me tell you, I know all about the Packers. Uh, I'm a sort of a football and basketball historian guy. Having to check that, so that must be where you got your clutch. Uh, I'm, I'm going, I'm going to shoot that ball because that's what he would have done. Right. Okay. <laughs> you know that that was his style, right? And then uh, the running back you talked about, uh, you know, you know, he beat my Cowboys, man. I, I, of course, I, that's history for me. I wasn't quite, you know, born yet, but I, I, I'm a Dallas Cowboy, Tom Landry, Tex Ram guy to the grave. Okay, so I know, you know, so I know about uh, Lombardi and them. And the whole team, you could name all. I know all the players, you know. So yeah, but he was a he was a heck of a back man. He was a heck of a back. You know, I can see why you were proud of yourself after him. Well, and and the thing that uh, we had a, our football coach, Coach Romeo, um, he he drilled it into me. He, he he kept saying one of the things he would say to me was, "Well, why?" As big as your legs are, you ought to be running over people. And he said that to me for three years. And it got to the point where I wouldn't avoid people. I would just try to run over them. And, and I remember this one time it was in, uh, we were playing at home and, um, 
I got the ball and somehow I got I broke out into the open, which was unusual for me. And um there was one guy between me, we were on about the the thirty yard line or so, and it was one guy between me and the goal line. And all I had to do was juke him, do something to get around him. And instead I ran over him and tripped over him. And so it, it was just ingrained in my head that you need to run over people. And so, you know, that's just an example. But um almost like a Larry Zonka. Yeah, that that's why I like uh Jim Taylor and his his running style, but yeah. Yeah, they, they were, those guys were tough, man. Very tough. I say almost like a Larry Zonka mentality you had, huh? Yeah. Got you. Got you. Who who played quarterback uh, when you uh, were um, playing football at Central? Yeah, um, Rick Farr. Uh, Richard Farr. Um, he 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 was uh, he he was a pretty good passer. Um, we 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 had a lot of um, really. Uh, good passing plays that we used to take advantage of people on. We had one that was called the look in pass and um the pass would it would be like a a short down and out, maybe a ten yard down and out um to Lamar or one of the wide receivers. But then our halfback Doug Wright would be a trailer and it would be the catch and then it would be a pitch out to him coming down the sideline. And so we used to run that off and on. Um that was that was a good play. Um but uh he, he was a good passer. Gotcha. He was also our punter that year too. Oh, okay. Rick okay. Yeah. Uh you, you have such a um so so it's almost like a uh fairy tale. You so you tell me you met your wife at Central. Sure, yeah. We I met her in um and, and oddly enough, just just uh, some uh, information about uh, our growing up. We we Faith grandmother lived about three or four blocks from me in Capitol. She she lived in Hillside. I lived in Capitol Heights, but, uh, so they border on each other. But anyway, she used to go there as a kid and um, and even a teenager and spend a lot of time there. So. We had, we never knew each other then, but but it was it was kind of a funny thing that we kind of grew up close to each other, never knowing each other until we got to Central. And um, see, she went to I don't know if you know this or, or not, but um, Central they started uh, having um, ninth graders in Central in uh, the 1963 school year which was also the first year of integration for Central. And so uh, uh, Faye Talbert then, she was one of the ninth grade, then they split the ninth grade because half the ninth grade went to Maryland Park, which is where Lamar and I went, and the other half went to Central. I guess they had a dividing line somewhere. But anyway, the point is uh, she, she started in Central in the ninth grade, which would be um, the fall of '63, and and that and I did talk to her about because um, uh, I don't know what one of your questions was about to Lamar was about the integration and how many were there, how many uh, black were there, and um, my wife remembers three. There was Joe Page and two girls, and she couldn't remember the names of the girls. But anyway. That's what was started the integration at, at Central. And then from there, it just, there were more and more. I don't know whether they changed the boundary lines, you know, to get um, more blacks in or not. But anyway, uh, there was three that first year. And then after that, it, it, um, it went up from there. So, uh, but, but as far as meeting say, um, we had uh, English class together, and she used to sit uh, behind me, and uh, and so that's kind of how we we got to know each other, and then um, and then we started uh, started dating. She was a she was a cheerleader uh, on a cheerleading squad, and um, 
And so, you know, we had that relationship. And uh, it, so we, we started going together February of our 10th grade year. And um, then went, went, um, went together throughout high school. And, you know, that, um, it, what, what I had, um, I guess you could say my um, objective when I was in high school wasn't really to go to college or to play ball at another level. It was to get out of school, get a job, and marry Faye. And that's what I did. Well, I mean, I went to school for one year. I, it really wasn't for me, college at that point. And so uh, we got married in 1968, uh, August of 68, which was a year after we graduated. And um, still married today. So, um, and, and, you know, Lamar and those guys, Ricky Yates, Ricky Yates takes credit for getting us together. <laughs> so, uh, he and and he and Lamar talked a little while ago. He said they were on the phone. They were talking about that. But um, anyway, we all were good friends though. In in high school, Ricky, um, Faye, and Lamar and I. Uh, and your dad. Your dad was a year behind, but we were all still all good friends. Um, and as a matter of fact, Faye mentioned the other day about, um, the picture of your dad when he was, um, long jumping and, um, he, he wrote in my wife's yearbook, uh, something to her. So I'll have to scan that and send it to you. But, uh, that, that was pretty cool. I mean, we just to show that we were all good friends. I mean, we, we, we didn't look at each other at least that group of people, we didn't look at, at each other as being black or white. Um, we, we were just friends. That's fantastic, man. So I want to tell, tell me about some of the dynamics since we talked about that. What were some of the challenges of that kind of relationship with black people that you've had back then and that you still have now? Because I can imagine you had you lost a lot. We're talking because of a social era and dynamic what what were some of the things you had to face personally because i know you took some backlash yeah um i uh i mean i i don't know that i think i come from a little bit different perspective because um i know that i've seen some of the um interviews and so on um the youtube thing um on racism and things like that, but and I know, um, and Lamar talked about some some bad things that happened to him and and um and Hurley uh, that he mentioned, one of his other good friends. Um, but quite honestly, I I don't I had a different experience. I mean, and I don't know, um, I don't know why that was. Uh, First off, um, I had I had Lamar to my house when we were we were high school or junior high and high school. Lamar would come to my house and we would do things, whatever, hang out, whatever. Then we would might go to a, a basketball court and play basketball. And and like I mentioned before, uh, and that that's when I lived in Capitol Heights and he. Um, he, he, we never, at least I never, when I was with him, experienced any kind of, um, racial issues, um, at all. Um, and then, then on the other hand, when we were at school, I, I mean, we were all friends together and hang out together and all that kind of stuff. And, um, I never, it, to, in my, experience i never saw any um racial issues um while i was with lamar or your dad or anybody like that i mean i maybe that's um and i'm sure i mean i would at least think i would remember if, if i mean because that would be something serious to me that would be that would be something that, that i wouldn't 
I would not like and would not put up with. So my point.